Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Ariel and today, as requested, I'm going to be talking about fountain pens and specifically beginner fountain pens. Over the past few years, I have been purchasing a few budget-friendly fountain pens, so I thought I would share with you guys some of my favorites. So for me personally, I think that budget-friendly fountain pens, uh, like these Lammies, are very important because I feel like that they open up a whole new world of fountain pens to new users. Also, it's very important that they look good, they're quite durable. Um, if you are a student, you also want to make sure that they are quite um, like workhorses. You can write as much as you want. So all of these fountain pens for me, I really do think that they fit that bill. Um, I think they are all really good quality and I think that they are very good for students. And if you are a beginner fountain pen user, then I think these are at a very good price point as well. So for me, I enjoy collecting fountain pens that I know um, are good quality, but also don't have a very big price point. Um, so I think the most expensive fountain pen that I have here are the Lamy Safaris here in the center. Um, I think in Canada, they can kind of go for around um, maybe $30, $35 Canadian. Uh, in the US, obviously, they would be much cheaper. I know there are also many people in the planner community specifically that also um, say that the uh, Twisby Eco or Echo um, is quite a affordable pen as well. I think in the US it's very affordable. Here in Canada it's maybe around the $50 price point so all of these fountain pens are much cheaper than that. But I do have the Twisby on my wish list. Maybe eventually I'll get it but for now I'm quite happy with the fountain pens that I have. So because we're talking about fountain pens and beginner fountain pens, um, I'm going to talk about my very first fountain pen in this video, and that is this one. So this platinum fountain pen was my very first fountain pen, and I really enjoyed it, obviously, because I went to purchase a few more, both from this brand and from others. The reason why I got this fountain pen was because it had an aluminum body. A lot of other budget-friendly beginner fountain pens are plastic, like these ones. Um, however, I wanted to try an aluminum for my first one because I was, I guess, a little bit extra. I really like the detailing here. I really like the silver hardware. And through this fountain pen, I sort of learned a little bit more about the fountain pen community. I really like the construction of this fountain pen. I think it feels really nice in the hand. Because this is an aluminum body, it can get cold so if you are in a cold climate. Um, I am living in Canada, so sometimes it does get cold, but it warms up really well in your hand afterwards. Personally, I really like posting my fountain pens. I don't tend to write without the cap on, and that goes for all of my fountain pens. But I really like these platinum fountain pens because they do have a slip and seal technology, which I will talk about a little bit later. So for my very first fountain pen, I wanted it to be a very good workhorse. That's why I went with Platinum, which is probably one of the biggest brands um, for fountain pens in Japan. So I went super simple with my platinum fountain pen here. This is the Plazier, by the way. For the past how many years that I have owned this fountain pen, I have still been using um, platinum cartridges, which I think works really well. Um, the cartridge is quite big, and as you can see, I do have black ink. For the past few years, I have been writing a lot in black ink, and I find that these cartridges can last me around uh, three to four months. I don't use it to write in anywhere else other than my journal in here, so that can last almost um, my full Hobonichi Avec book, um, if you're familiar with those. Um, but I think these are a really good, affordable fountain pen, especially for beginners, um, because I think it's just so easy. Like I mentioned earlier, it does have the slip and seal technology, which means you can use this fountain pen for literally years. If you just so happen to leave this fountain pen um, for a couple of years with the same ink cartridge or whatever you have inside, and you pick it up um, a couple years later and you try and write with it, you're still going to be able to use this fountain pen. The ink will not dry out if it's capped. So that's something that I really like about platinum pens, and because this was my first fountain pen, this does have a special place in my heart. I think many people are like that with their fountain pens, um, and I guess I'll talk about it a little bit later um, as I move on to my Lammies. So I do really like this fountain pen. It's sort of like the step up of the Platinum Preppy, which has a plastic body. Um, and also I think there is the Profonte, which I think is similar. Uh, but another great thing about this Platinum fountain pen is that you can switch the nibs out between all of them. You can even switch the caps out. For example, this is another platinum fountain pen here uh, that I recently have that I'll talk about a little bit later. I'll be able to switch out the nibs if I want to and even the cap um, of my other one fits perfectly on 
uh, this plazier. So that's something that is really interesting about these um, and something that I really like. So this plazier fountain pen definitely opened up a new world to me um, of fountain pens and I'm really happy with it. Um, I still use it quite a bit and I think it's a pretty good workhorse because it's quite sturdy and it also has a clip on it as well. So I think it'll be good for students um, if they want to clip it into their notebooks or something like that. So moving on to the Lamy Safaris. I think that a lot of people do choose Lamy Safaris as their very first fountain pen. Not only does the design look really nice, I think it's very classic, um, but they come in a variety of different colors. These ones are the special limited edition colors from the 2019 lineup, I think. I am missing the pink one, but I do really like both of these colors and I have both of them inked up right now. And I do also have a few other ones. Where did my Delphonics pouch go? As I unbox these, I'll talk a little bit um, about the Lamies. So, um, I believe the Lamy Safari line uh, was created to cater towards the beginner fountain pen users. And I think that's a very good idea because, uh, like I said, if you are sentimental about things like I am, um, your very first whatever will be um, something that is always very close to your heart. So personally, I think that Lamy Safaris are at a very good price point. So whether you have moved on to another brand, another more expensive brand, the Lamy Safaris are still something that are very classic and that I still think a lot of people um, really enjoy. So as you guys saw, I did unbox a few other fountain pens here. These are also Lamy Safaris, but these are the special edition 2020 ones. I am missing one, which is the mango. Um, I just decided to get these two colors. I think this one is violet and this one is aquamarine. I can't remember the color names now, but I'm really happy with this collection. Like I said, I do have two inked and then these two are obviously brand new. So the reason why I like purchasing Lamy Safaris is because of the classic design to them. This clip is something that I really like because um, it can fit really well into pockets, it can clip into notebooks, etc, etc, uh, and the construction is very sturdy. All of these fountain pens are made out of plastic. I think I read somewhere that these um, are all made out of the same plastic that Legos are made, so if you are a Lego fan, you might enjoy these fountain pens as well. But I hope you guys can see here the difference in the finishes of these fountain pens. The ones from 2020 have a more matte finish. They're not shiny, but they have a little bit of texture to them. These ones um, have sort of like a glossy finish to it. And personally for me, I do enjoy these ones better. But I guess that is just for aesthetic, but I really like how classic this looks. Um, and I also really enjoy this little peephole so you can see your ink level. So this blue macaron pen, I really do like. what nib did I get it in? Uh, I got this in a medium and I am also using the cartridge in here. I rarely use blue inks but I do like this Lamy um, ink because I think the um, color is really nice. Again I think this is a very good beginner fountain pen. If you are someone who um, how do I explain this? Uh, that doesn't like a lot of resistance when writing uh, then I would say to go for the Lamy Safari. Uh, when I first switched from my Platinum to my Lamy, I did notice that this fountain pen wrote a lot smoother. Maybe if the tip was a little bit smaller, like a fine or extra fine, it would be a little bit scratchier. Uh, but I do get a lot of, uh, what's the word, feedback on this one more than I do this. That is just something that I notice between uh, these brands. And I also have this one, wait, what? What nib size did I get in this one? I did get mediums for all of them, so I'm going to have a pretty smooth experience with all of these fountain pens. Obviously, if you do purchase other fountain pens, maybe some of their more expensive uh, Lamy designs, then the nibs might be a little bit different. If you want to upgrade a little bit to the Lamy All-Star, which is very similar to this, but with a metal body, uh, then that is a little bit more expensive, not in the price range of this video. It has a similar construction, and I'm assuming that the nib is a little bit different. Uh, so in this green fountain pen, I do have a green ink in here. Uh, I do like to match the color of my ink to whatever body it is. So I do have a green ink in here, and I really like it. This nib is a fine nib actually, uh, but I really like it. Even with this fine nib, um, with the ink that I have in here specifically, I still think that I get a lot of variation in my writing, which is something that I really like. So I do think that these fountain pens are a very good construction. Um, I do like using these little sections over here on the barrel to place my fingers. And this pen, by the way, I did add a converter, which is something that you can buy and use instead of a cartridge. 
I do like using both, it just depends if the company of your fountain pen offers uh, the colors that you like. This ink that I have in here is a Lamy bottled ink uh, that I just use this fountain pen uh, converter with and I think it works really well. But that was my Lamy collection. Uh, as you can see, it's starting to grow. Surprisingly, I don't have a pink one in here yet, but um, I do have one in here. So the very last fountain pen that I have to talk about today is one that is also from Platinum. So these two are from the same brand, but they just look very different. Uh, this fountain pen is a China exclusive. I purchased it off of AliExpress because I really liked it. Um, I thought it was really cute. Um, it has a transparent body. It is also made out of plastic. But if you look a little bit closer, you can see um, a few little like glitter sparkles inside it, uh, which I think is really nice. I do have another one, which I have in here. I'll just show you guys that. Um, so like I said, this was a China exclusive. This is the Platinum Shooting Star, or it could also be called Little Shooting Star or Little Meteor. They also have a few variations where the body is opaque like these, but I obviously picked up the Sanrio versions. This one is a My Melody version, and then I also picked up this one, which is Hello Kitty, and it is purple. So I know this might not be everyone's aesthetic and I understand that, but um, I really wanted to pick up these fountain pens because when else am I going to find a fountain pen that is really cute and sparkly? The other glittery or sparkly fountain pens that I have seen, uh, they are all really expensive and currently out of uh, the budget of this video. So that's why I wanted to purchase these and talk to you guys about these um, because I think they are a very good affordable version. And like I said, I really do enjoy platinum fountain pens. So this is the packaging that came uh, with the fountain pen. As you might notice, it is geared towards students. I'm not a student, but um, I do really appreciate cute packaging. Uh, so this is sort of like a test tube. It has a few stickers, uh, it has a Sanrio seal on the bottom here. Uh, but what I really liked about this pen was not only did it come with a cartridge, this is what the platinum cartridges look like. Um, it's black, by the way. But this fountain pen also came with a converter, which I currently have in here right now. So the converter that came with this fountain pen is plastic. It's much like the ones that um, are in Lamy, but I know that also offers a more expensive converter uh, that has uh, some metal or maybe, maybe it's aluminum parts as well. But I thought it was a great deal to pick up this because not only do you get a really cute uh, fountain pen body, uh, but you also do get a cartridge as well as a converter. So that's why I got it and that's why I think it's a very good affordable pen, especially for students. So for me personally, using this converter was a lot easier than using the Lamy one because the Lamy one is a piston filler so you um, like twist the top of it to make the piston go down and then you make it go up and then you make it go down again and, until your converter is full. Uh, for this one it just has this little lever that you push um, like this, you just go up and down like this. There is no twisting involved but you just do it like maybe three or four times. Um, and the ink will go through the feed and all the way up into your converter. So I really like these and I think they do offer them like to purchase separately. I'm not sure if you can get them at some other larger places, but I really like this converter even though um, it is essentially more affordable and made with cheaper materials. So I really enjoyed this fountain pen body because I think it is weighted very well. Um, I think this is the longest fountain pen that I have. Let me just see. No, I think the Lamy's are just about the same. So I hope that you can see this, but the fountain pens are just about the same height when they are posted. Maybe this platinum one is just a little bit longer. But like I said, uh, the reason why I enjoy using this fountain pen is because the construction is very sturdy. Being a fountain pen that is geared towards students, you need to have something that um, can be sort of like a workhorse, you know, they're not going to take too much time to fill it. They're not going to take too much care with it. They're just going to put it in their pencil case and go. They have a lot of things to do, a lot of studying to do, a lot of writing. So I personally really like the shape of this. As you can see, it's a little bit tapered towards the end. And like I said before, it does have the platinum uh, slip and seal technology in it. So even if you leave this fountain pen for an extended amount of time without use, the ink inside will not dry out. I don't know if you guys can see this in this fountain pen. Um, I can see it here because it is transparent, but there is a little spring inside uh, this cap here. Obviously you won't be able to tell in here. Um, but there is a little spring inside with sort of like a conical 
uh, like hood over top of it so that encases the nib. So that is how your fountain pens won't dry out, which is really cool. So I'll quickly unbox this one uh, so you guys can see what you get. I also want to show you how cute the fountain pen is. Um, so I just took it out of the test tube like packaging, which is something that I really like by the way, because you can always reuse this uh, for something else. Uh, the Lamy's just come in cardboard, uh, like you saw earlier, like this. Uh, but this is again uh, the cartridge for the Platinum, which is very easy to use. And then this one is the converter, which has a ball agitator inside. So you can shake it and get the ink moving. Even though this is a relatively cheap converter, I still think it works really well because all you need to do is um, push this up and down like that. And it's like for me 10 times easier. It took me a while to um, get the ink up in my Lamy converter, but this one literally took two seconds. So I will try my best to link all of these fountain pens. These ones I got from AliExpress. I do have an AliExpress um, coupon code that you guys can use. You can try and use it at the store I purchased these from, but you can also use it on other things from Ali. So I will leave that code down below for you guys to use um, because I think it's like 25 bucks um, or even more, maybe $30 worth of coupons. So I will leave that down below just in case if you guys want it. And I'll also try and link all of these as well. But I'm very happy with all of these beginner fountain pens. I think they're um, all very good workhorses and good for um, the price point. Personally, for me, if I know a fountain pen is going to work well, um, it's going to last a long time, it's very um, good construction and a very good value. I mean, what more can you want? I don't know if you guys can tell just from this video today, but if I really like something, I tend to purchase that thing in various different colors. So as you can see, my Lamy collection, and I do know there are two more colors in this collection of the Shooting Star that are the Sanrio um, ones. So I think I'm still going to purchase those to finish out that collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video of my affordable fountain pen collection. I know that these fountain pens are going to be in my collection for a long time and I know they're going to be very durable. I think in a separate video I will show you guys um, in detail what I have inked and I'll show larger swatches and stuff like that um, so you will be able to see but I think that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and informational for you guys. I'm hoping in the next few years to collect a few more fountain pens and to learn a lot more about uh, different brands and such so um, I hope that I will be able to continue talking to you guys about fountain pens and more of the stationery that I am beginning to love. So I'm going to sign off here now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye!